The egalitarian prayer space at the Western Wall has been a source of great controversy in Israel. And even though the Supreme Court ordered the government to facilitate its construction, it's still been put on ice. Joining us now to discuss why is Rabbi Gilad Kariv, the executive director of the Israel Movement for Reform and Progressive Judaism, Leslie Sachs, exec executive director of Women of the Wall, Seth Farber, the director of E-Team, the Jewish Advocacy Center, and Rabbi David Fendel, the dean of Yeshivat Chesedim. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us. Now, let's begin with the, the somewhat basic question, but important question. If the Western Wall is holy to all Jews, then why is it a problem to have an egalitarian prayer space? We think there is no, there is no good reason why not to have an egalitarian plaza, aside to the gender-segregated plaza that serves uh, more, traditional, uh, more traditional Jews. We, the non-Orthodox denominations, together with the women of the wall, we strongly support the need to create a place for all Jews and all Jewish groups, communities, and denominations in the Western wall. Now, clearly not everybody agrees with that, rabbis. Not only don't we agree, it's so sad that something so beautiful, like the Kota, which unites all Jews, has to become a source of controversy. It's, it's a great opportunity to beg you to leave it alone. Don't, why bring all the problems of the reform movement to Israel? We're, we're doing so great. In other words, it became a magnet for Jews from all denominations. And we found the common denominator, and it's so beautiful, and it's breathtaking, and it's such a beautiful experience in Jerusalem Day. These are all Jews, and to divide it, to make two people, to bring divisiveness into this country, Leave it in America. It, it is an illusion that this is a common denominator. It is an illusion that everybody feels at home at the Western Wall. Because most women do not feel at home at the Western Wall. Because we are not permitted to pray out loud. Because we are not permitted to pray the way many of us want to pray, we don't feel at home. Issues of supposed modesty there are unacceptable to most of the women who do come to the Western Wall. So why does the majority of Jews of the world have to uh, be, change their ways in order to uh, go according to what a minority demands? I, I believe that there's an opportunity here. This isn't only a question of controversy. Controversy also often leads to creative resolution. What's happened now is that religion has become politicized, and that's the most unfortunate thing. As an Orthodox rabbi, I believe strongly that non-Orthodox non brothers and sisters have genuine spiritual aspirations, and if they need a place to pray that isn't in the way that I think they have to pray, they deserve to have that pray place. The Kotel, the Western Wall, Jerusalem, Israel, it's a place for all Jews. It's not just a place for Orthodox Jews or one type of Orthodox Jew. And because of that, I think we needed to come up with a solution. What's happened now is that there was a solution. There's a solution in place. It was a solution that was worked on for years. And unfortunately, now because of political considerations, that solution is being pushed back. Now is the opportunity to use the Kotel as a place that actually can unite all Jews. We can accept our differences. We can celebrate our differences, even if we don't agree. We can agree to disagree. I don't accept the uh, way, as, as a halachic Jew, as a Jew committed to orthodox tradition, I don't accept the, uh, the authenticity of people who don't do things my way. But I so understand let's, let's that talk, they have a right to do that. Let's talk about halakha. Is it set in stone or does it change? The root of the word halakha is to walk. Lalechet is to walk. It is supposed to change. It does change. And it has changed all along the, the, the times. So definitely it needs to change. You know, we can debate the issue of the Jewish traditional law and we, we do not share the same perspective. But the interesting point is that when it comes to the way of worship next to the wall, there is no halacha. There is no halachic or, or, or a core halachic problem with this uh, concept of having an, a, a prayer area with no gender, uh, gender segregation. You know, usually people that are trying to impose their way are using the language of unity. But the best way to create a, a unity in a diverse community is to enable all people to celebrate a, a, a their own way 
and to truly try to find the common de denominator by imposing your way, you are not promoting any understanding in the Jewish people. If we truly want all Jews to celebrate Jerusalem here in Israel and outside Israel, we need to welcome all Jews and the way they understand their religious traditions. Rabbi, do you know how many differences there are in Jewry? And on Yom Atzmaut, we pray differently on Independence Day in Israel. Maybe we should make a different kotel for each segment and, and really divide us and, and tear us apart. I think it's important to know that the tefillin, the phylacteries that we wear, are the same ones that were worn thousands of years ago. Little changes, it's like you go off the highway, you, you, you never know where you're going to land. Mm -hmm. We have a right to create a common denom denominator, which is the beginning. And then if you deviate, if it's so a common why not denominator, join? If you're not imposing on me your way, that's not about finding a compromise. Forcing me to walk the path that you chose, that's not a common de denominator. When President, that's Trump, about when President Trump came and respected the way of the Kotel, were we forcing something on him? It's respect to the Jewish people. It's a, it's a tremendous attempt to work together. And we're not using unity as a. There's You're a lot not of lines. Right. The question, you the question to work is. Together. Well, here, here's the question. You know, Jewish identity is changing in many ways, especially among the Jewish diaspora that we're seeing. How do you? Um, I mean, are there fears? First of all, that we're going to be alienating many people who are coming from abroad by by not providing this egalitarian prayer space. And kind of, what is your response to that issue of changing Jewish identity? We've seen groups. Of, from Jews from all denominations that came to Stirot, where we live. And so, uh, so a beautiful country that's thriving and growing and found a status quo, found a way of observing Shabbat and respecting. And, and they see this is our tradition. And they're, in, they're, in, they're tremendously impressed. And I think uh, the Reform Movement, who at first didn't believe in the return to Zion, thinks things are changing within the Reform Movement. We're not changing. And we have a right that this could be a common denominator. And you know there's a lot of freedom of religion in this country. Well, we need, an, we need to use the Western Wall, that space, as, an, as a place that can unify. One of the great ironies of the whole discussion is that the chief rabbinate themselves offered, they offered the egalitarian movements a different space. The difference now is just a matter of a couple of hundred meters. But because things have become so politicized, well, we're distancing not tens of Jews or hundreds of Jews. We're distancing millions of Jews from the state of Israel. And at this critical moment, at a time when Israel is, so, is such a divisive thing, especially on the North American scene, we have a great responsibility here in Israel. And I say as Orthodox Jews and as right. the Allah community, well, to embrace people, to say, yes, you have a place here. Well, it looks like, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to solve this issue today at the table. And we have run out of time. But thank you all for joining us. It's been very enlightening.